Good evening and welcome on in. It is the start of the Gallerance Community League powered by Elgato. Got a new member helping out. We got a new season and it's season three. I'm a evil cat joined here with S Sleepy C and we're into the first match of the season. Tonight it's going to be Mocha up against Valkyrie. Or I think it's actually the second match of the se season, but the first for the owning division. And how are you doing tonight, Sleepy? You know, I'm doing good, and I'm kind of happy to see this because looking at this roster, we're seeing a lot of representatives from last uh, season's owning mm -hmm. league moved up into open to the division. And so now we're kind of seeing like how these girls are progressing and how they will kind of stack up against these higher tier players when they're the newcomers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I misspoke and called it owning, but it is open that we're into things. My brain has just a couple brain cells to rub together, but we've come together enough to figure out what's going on. And it is going to be Ascent as our first map. That is the pick of Team Valkyrie. And the second up is going to be uh, what I'm very excited about. It's going to be Icebox picked in by Mocha. So we'd love to see some of that. Select your agent. Yeah, and right now we're having very similar team compositions, except leaning more towards the informational side on the attacker side, which would be the Valkyries. And so right now I'm looking at it kind of leaning towards more of a pick for Mocha because I feel like Mocha has a lot of strong players that can perform well individually. And I feel like if they can win those gunfights, they can do very well. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think there's definitely some strong people in the lobby today and i think that it's going to be interesting to see if we talk about the agent selection i think that there's some interesting choices out tonight for the side of team mocha over on that defender side i'm noticing that they're running sage with yeah that's kind of the bog standard these days she's been coming more and more into the meta as kind of one of those mainstay agents but what i'm noticing with that is that they've elected to still run double duelist that means no breach no sky no silva all of those agents, very powerful here on Ascent. Yeah, and I feel like this is definitely a map where you want to kind of have more of that information lean because it's such a big map. Once you get that small little inkling as to where your enemies are, you know, you want to play off of that. You want to be able to do those quick rotates because if not, it's just so much ground to traverse. And by then, you already have half your time up and you won't get the time to do the things that you need to do. Raid takes sight, diffuse the spike. It just depends on budgeting time by gathering information. And so that's kind of why I'm leaning more towards Mocha because Valkyrie does not have that. Yeah, they do have this aggressive setup over towards the B side of things, but both teams have been dispelled, falling back just a little bit. And Smoke's exchanged at mid, so it's a bit of a slower start to this pistol round here. Yeah, and I was looking at that kind of sort of push towards A, but they immediately backed off once that wall came up and you know pistol round you're not going to be able to win that fight and so now we're going to see just a lot of spread out players more leaning towards mid and pushing into cat and oh look at this mimi it seems like they're all kind of just going for the same area and winter's not looking yeah she might just be caught off guard here but the fact that she's still good for one there is really huge thought walking trying to come through for this trade and she will find it down to 25 but that healing orb will keep her healthy and keep things at that positive Four to three odds for this retake. Yeah, and look at this. They have the sight down, and so all pigeonholed onto heaven. Yeah, but that pick will come through. The way of the defense now into a four on two drop down with the classic, but it will be Lindsay and Hell to win that duel out. However, these attackers, they're isolated. However, Lindsay, she's still finding picks courtesy of her paranoia. However, Brit through on that trade. So now it's Ginny alone. She finds the first. And while she's down low, she's gotten this to a 1v1. Brit holding on that spike, swings out wide, and takes the final frag. It's a close one, but in the end, it will be the defensive side of Mocha to pick it up. Yeah, and like I said, there's a lot of people who can perform well individually. And I also really want to commend the fact that they managed to gather so many corners, despite having kind of a disadvantage at the beginning when they were kind of pigeonholed into that one area where they couldn't really spread out. You know, if Winter had been looking in that moment, that would have been devastating at the very beginning but they were able to get onto site get the plant down it's just they weren't able to hold it because of these strong aggression by the defenders and so now we are going to be looking at a light buy on the defenders part and it seems like the team valkyrie is going to kind of have to scrounge for bits right now and try and get some picks to kind of gain a little bit of an economic advantage yeah, again, we're seeing this kind of bit aggressive setup towards B main. We saw that last time, and I actually really like the setup 
on those pistol rounds, trying to use those flashes in to try and get some aggression. And over on the screen, it's kind of the expected result. These specters doing good work to mop up two frags. Yeah, but look at this aggression on the defender side, pushing into B main, and it looks like they are going to try and gain some ground, kind of read as to where they're going, and so they're going to rotate off of that a bit early, but they're going to completely... Or they aren't. Uh, it just seems like stalling out right now. And the attackers don't really have much to do with this because it's a 3v5 situation. They're going to have to play this very safe and kind of hope for some picks here and there. Yeah, this might be a chance, but Winter, she's ready for it nevertheless. So this should just be a courtesy call as these remaining players will be found in due time. And looking ahead here, this full save will allow a buy to come out for that attacker's side. But... I love that Brit has already been kind of early on farming some of these alt orbs, farming some frags. So she's close to that run it back. One of those ults that you can get off up so often. Yeah, and that's very good, especially if they want to kind of get a quick read on where the positioning is and so they can rotate very well. And um, I was also looking at that and that omen blind, you know, just kind of swinging off of that. You know, they could have had a little bit more of an advantage in regards to economy mm -hmm. if they kept that weaponry, but they decided to swing off of that. And you just can't depend on that omen flash anymore since it's such a small diameter of effect. Yeah, that near sight, not always going to do the same as a full blind. We see Ginny Jelly up towards main, and they have this double flash set up again off the contact. Curveball comes out, but they actually... It's interesting that they don't follow that up. They fall back, but across the map, Miss Blue Jay, she finds a great opener with the Spectre. Oh, aggressive from her as well. So she's going to double down, and look how much map control she has now, CC. Yeah, and so that's going to pinch them in towards the B site. And so they are going to get a read as to where they are. So they just have to hold these positions and kind of wait for them to peek, swing off of that and pick them. Oh, but California, yeah. look at this. Yeah, good frag from her, but there is a setup for the refrag. And if we look towards Jenny Jelly, Last she's continuing. Or I'm sorry, Miss Blue Jay, rather. She's continuing this flank up. Now it's all on to the Rays holding in tight, spotted out. And Blue Jay finds four to keep it pretty flawless here at three rounds. That's an impressive showing. Yeah, especially when uh, they were still kind of on that bonus, and so they just managed to pick up a bunch of weaponry off of off of that. And now, look at this. Wow, Valkyrie's going to definitely be hurting for, like, the next two rounds at least. Mm -hmm. So these are going to be some easily convertible rounds for Team Mocha. And it seems like Miss Blue Jay is going to elect to go for the op because they're just that secure in their economy right now. And so I'm wondering, what do you think could be done at this point? Because it looks like right now they're trying to switch it up more towards an alien, but I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah, I actually like this call. They've noticed that kind of double aggression from the Killjoy and the Phoenix towards um, towards B main. So they are electing to lean towards A this time. Blue Jay with an early miss shot, so not going to find too much early on. However, look at these rotations from the B site. They're already starting to lean their way towards A, and that's where the execution comes out. Curveball to initiate, and this is just a full retake play. However... This is that Hunter's Fury in the picture. Winter in close finds one on to Ginny. Traded through but thought walking up top for one of her own. So this is kind of a recreation of the pistol round now. 4v3 back in. Yeah, but this time they maintain tree control. And look at this. We do have somebody trying to play off of the plant. But they're not going to have the ability to because this is a 4v2 situation. They're going to have to get all these frags just to, just to kind of defend the bond defuse. Yeah, and that defuse will start to come through. Just a tap, however. The op from Miss Blue Jay holding main, the Sage Wall for extra injury. But look at this flank coming through. She goes on Shaft for the first, the second as well. Thought walking on the cleanup, but that's some good damage found. Yeah, and so uh, there's not going to much change from that round, too. Because, again, it, it's not something that they're going to be able to change around for like the next round because they're still going to have to save. Or if they try and force into this, they're going to have to win this round or else it's going to be another repeat of that last situation. And especially when you have a Sage on the defender side, you don't want to be trying to face up against the Sage wall when, it's, when you just have a pistol. You're not going to be able to break that down quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely like them. And they also were able to recover that operator for Mr. Blue Jay. So the buy looking quite stellar for Mocha, but uh, Team Valkyrie, they have a chance back into this now. Rifles up to trot. And it's just kind of the solo lurk towards mid-A. The remainder of these players look prime towards the B site. Yeah, we do have three ults up that can kind of flush out defenders on the B side, which it looks like the defenders are leaning towards that. And so they're going to try to do just that right now, hoping for the right timing to go off of it. 
Yeah, there's nothing to really nullify this. No Hunter's Fury. So it will come through, but Violet still finds one with her Swarm Grenade. And honestly, that's kind of the best they could hope for there. A 5v4, make that a 5v3 on the work back in. And while they have that advantage, it's been completely squashed out. Yeah, we Run do it back. Some... Back in here now. Flash around the corner. Britt's trying to find that, and she will pick up the first, but still... There's frags coming the other way. It's Lindsay from back sight. Paranoia up, but it doesn't quite catch the omen. So Lindsay doubling down with her frags. Now a 2v3. Thought walking spots out the last one as Miss Blue Jay's off. Rings true. Now 5 to 0 here. Yeah, and I, I think that a lot of that was being able to retake by just putting so much pressure from different corners. You know, you saw uh, California get picked off just from peeking at the wrong angle because so much pressure was being applied at that angle. They could they didn't have the ability to focus on other ones, and so it was just very easy re retake by them. And they didn't even have to use their ults in that situation. You know, we have very offensive ults um, on uh, Mocha's side. I mean, we did see the Phoenix ult, but that's more so just to kind of get a peek as to where everybody is positioned. But other than that, you know, it was just a very clean retake. Yeah. And if we look a little earlier in the round, we saw that off the bat, that Omen was the was the sole lurker towards middle. So there was no smoke for the cross, which allowed those two frags to come through. So really a punishing round to lose now. And now they're going to just try and pick at each kind of site, get a feel for where everything is, leave Bomb back a little bit, and see what they can really take out of this. Because right now, it's at 5-0. They need to try and fix what's going wrong right here. Yeah, 5-0. I mean, it's not an impossible scoreline. I think this is definitely a defender-favored map, and they can find time still, but Brit spots out that gun in middle. She's not going to capitalize off of it, but still, good information garnered. And with the quietness coming through, they can they can surmise that this is just a default. They can just chill out and wait for the aggression to come. It looks like the aggression will lean towards an ace site. Kind of trying, waiting for the rotate so they can push oh. at the same time. Did she eat that? Oh, <laughs> oh no, it didn't, it didn't. No. All right. I thought, I thought she had a, a recon dart for breakfast, but not to be. Now, the split execution through good paranoia from Winter to quell this push, and it actually gets capitalized off of by Thought Walking. She's trying to double down on a pick for main, but has a paint grenade for her trouble. It's still 5v5 here. A little bit of damage either way. And the hot hands comes up and over. Not going to hit that spike carrier. So this will be allowed. And ooh, look at this setup down in hill. This is going to be a tough one to break. Yeah, but it looks like they do still have tree control. So they can apply a bit more pressure to the defenders. Won't let them push from so many angles. Ooh. And so they just need to kind of maintain this. Yeah, here comes that curveball. And she's going for the peak, but actually catches a rough timing. And whiffs the shots as well. So now this has given them a way in. And given them that lockdown. So 4v4. And the resurrection also comes up to bring Britain to the picture. Carissa's trying to push in here. She finds one. But now into a three on two. One down in hell. And the other's known in tree. That's Karai taken care of. But look at the time. The swarm grenades could just do this here. As the time ticks away, there's just there's nothing they can do here, Cece. Oh, and they even try to force that plant, losing the weapon, but they're sitting fine on cast. They don't really have to worry about this. But despite winning that round, it looks like Team Mocha, uh, I mean Team Valkyrie, that wasn't good for them financially because, again, they're going to yeah. have to force into this. Only one r weapon remained. That's not really a win in my eyes. That's still very detrimental to their team. And so they're going to have to try and gain at least another round or try not to die. I don't know because it's just not looking good right now yeah I mean I think they'll take any round when they can get but still that's not going to do much to quell this momentum and look at this we are going more towards B lean push and we're seeing the same setup from bit over and over again and she's just kind of oh no they're gonna choose not to flash this a little bit of a change up this time and so now we're gonna see a bit more of attacker presence inside B for once yeah, they do have this lockdown available now. Look at Blue Jay's position. If she doesn't get flushed out by utility here, it's going to be a tough take regardless. The Owl Drone activates, and look at how slowly they're taking this CC. This means that rotates can start coming through, but it is the decision to fall away. At least for now. They could double back. Well, it, look at this. If we can get California up in mid a little bit more, we can kind of put a little more pressure in market so that they aren't peaked from so many different angles. But it looks like right now it's just being played very slow. I don't know if they're trying to wait for time or something, but... Oh, there the ult comes down. Yeah, and did successfully push two players, but there's still three here holding on tight. 
They've learned their lesson, and they're going to kind of wait for a smoke. But over in middle, Thought Walking won't find that one. It's California and Violet back on the trade. That calm just wasn't quick enough, so Miss Blue Jay falls. But again, the safe hands of Winter here available. She can't find the shot either. This is getting very, very awkward, CC. Now on to just one. It's Karai tucked in with that Spectre. She has 19 seconds to work with, but she doesn't really have a head. She doesn't have anything in this. 6-1 now. Yeah, and uh, I, I really like the kind of aggression towards middle. I think that mm -hmm. just the performance on California and Lindsay's part was very uh, essential to kind of gaining as much ground as they did. You know, that free pick on Miss Blue Jay because she was so hyper-focused on that one angle. Once you're able to do that, you can't have as many people just focus on one single point and kind of pick you off so easily because you're getting faced down by like three guns at once. It, you need to have multiple positions to put pressure on so that way you have a little more freedom as to where you can push. Yeah, absolutely. No, this is, the situation is looking tougher and tougher for the side of Valkyrie as things go on. Still, they have a chance in this, but I have a feeling it might not start here. Yeah, already with this wall kind of holding them back for a little bit there. They're going to have to elect to wait or rotate. And it seems like they're going to choose to be patient with this. Meanwhile, we do have attackers. I mean, defenders already pushing in to the attacker side. And so they're not going to be checking this. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> okay, she found the shot. It's okay. It's okay. We can reset <laughs> off that one. And it will just be the expected frag out. Who can find this last pick is the real question. The position now known of the omen, and it will be Violet Alley, the winner of the raffle, to find that frag. And that's just another converted round for the defenders. And you know what? Despite you saying how 5-0 uh, was at least decent, I agree that was decent, but I don't think you can really come back once you get to kind of like that 8th round win. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think... I mean, I think right if you get an 8-4 half, I think it's doable at that point. I think even 9-3 is doable, but it starts to get into that territory where it's going to take a pretty monumental comeback to swing back into things. Absolutely. And so right now, let's hope we can get that comeback because we do have eco buys on both parts. And so maybe we can kind of see a little more action in regards to gunfights and equal performance from both teams. Hopefully, maybe even Valkyrie taking some rounds. Yeah, Brick getting aggressive here. She has that curveball up. The rocket from Karai is going to try and activate into the site. She actually goes all the way over. Great rocket and a connection for the second. Karai has just split open this. Well, okay, that, that grenade didn't. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's go back to the two frags she got because that was stellar from Karai. And now from the back line, Thought Walking trying to come back in. She has that slow orb into main, but things are going to slow down for the defense. Honestly, even if they don't win this round, the economy damage they could do here would be so impactful, CC. Uh, I definitely think they can, but also, it's like, they, they just need a few picks. A few picks and they can get this. Yeah, and that won't be the start. I Carissa finds one. This is quite a play with the Blade Storm. It won't pay off, though. So actually, a flawless response, and this is exactly what the girls of Valkyrie need to start to pull back in here. Yeah, and so hopefully they could kind of take this to at least a 7-5 half. This could actually look good for them. I mean, it, right now they're heading towards the right direction, and it seems like they are able to perform very well. And so now they're going to try that A push that we haven't been seeing a lot. Right yeah, now we do have uh, two ults on both sides, and so it's kind of equal everywhere right now. It's just is going to depend on individual performance and players getting frags. Yeah, I mean, look at the economy still for the defense. They're not going to get reset by this one. They'll have that loss bonus built up to 1900. They'll be able to buy back in. So, I mean, what can they do? They need to get at least a streak of two if they want to push the defenders down to an eco. And they're looking for the start over at A. Those are lockdown activated. And the blast packs clear out sight completely. Owl drone up and top walking. That's a, that's a little bit of an overextension that she'll get punished for. But they have a bit of control over Heaven. Still not much presence in Tree. They're going to elect to completely wait for that, leave it open for the defenders the flank. to take. Oh, no. Yeah, there is a double flank coming through. 4v4 odds now. That Killjoy turret will dissuade. Brit on the run it back. It reveals some information on the Hell player. This is going to be a crunch. Hunter's Fury in the picture, but not really in a position to use it. Brit getting spammed through the floor. 
up in heaven. And with the time taking, they have to go quickly. Winter finds a refrag for her fallen compatriot. And through the door is Violet. She doesn't even find a frag. Winter gets mopped up as well. And it has to be Brit. She finds the first three. And that Molly might tell that she has the misread. Now, a wall up. Starting to hold on to this bomb. And through the flames comes Karai to hold on tight for three. Yeah, and she just wanted to get it to half at this position, but Karai did not let that happen. She swung out, and she just got the frag. And so that was very well played on their part. And so now that's going to kind of let it change a little more, because look at this. That is their second round that they've won in the world. If we get at least one more, uh, the economic damage is just going to make it for a free fifth. And that's going to be mm -hmm. looking good for them, especially yeah, on the just... defender side. Yeah, this is looking a lot better than, than what things started off with with Valkyrie. It was, what was that? That was a streak of five rounds in a row before they could even win one. So really picking things up for the girls of Valkyrie. They're starting to come a lot online in the server, but Brit is trying to make a play here. She peeks around, and Violet might be the perfect bait. They're not going to check on this. She finds two. Not quite the third, but she might have just done enough. It's a 4v2 now, CC. Yeah, despite, uh, it, it was just... She completely changed the round's composition from that. I don't think you can come back from that. The Valkyries basically can't do much in regards to this situation. <laughs> I mean, it's a 2v4, but the Resurrection's still available. The Lockdown's still available. The one friend that they have is that from the Shadows and an MTA site. Right now, though, they are going to have to kind of take it patiently. Oh, Oof. and that is not looking good for them 5v2 now and we do have defenders rotating back to a side so it looks like they're gonna have to face some form of fight here try and take this well, this is the this... round they want to continue their momentum this is this is an important one for them because if this spirals out of their control this could still be a 9-3 half this clutch is going to be tough though 2v5 and a dark cover will stave them off. More utility to come. And that's another 15 seconds. At this point, they might be forced through the smoke and forced into a disadvantageous position where the entire team of Mocha is waiting out through the smoke is the first. And she's actually going to ult across site. She's going for this. A 1v5. This is a brave, brave play from Lindsay. Oh, she's going to have to defend this all alone on the site. 1v5. Can she win this? Yeah, that paranoia, too, perfectly blinds her. She's trying to peek out for something, but spots out the onslaught. An army coming down on her. She's looking for a frag. Finds the first, the second. Can't quite connect the next. Still, that is a very decent round because, again, uh, just the mochas are hurting economically. And so maybe they can bring this back, but I don't think it's looking good right now. I mean, at most, we're going to have, uh, I don't know, one Spectre on the Mocha's team. Last Meanwhile, Team Valkyrie is going to have to try and win these gunfights. Yeah, 8-3 now. So this last round going to be an important one. The economy looks okay for both sides. Yeah, I don't see any more ults coming up at this point. I mean, at this point, you're getting what you're, you're going to see. Right now, it looks like it's going to be more of a B-lean. And so, we do have the same composition by the defenders. It's just... It will be dissuaded by this kind of... I mean, they've been doing the same play towards B every round, and it's never really been challenged. The adjustments, though... I'm, I mean, the adjustments from Valkyrie have been, have been good. I think they've found their stride in this later game, but... Look towards the opera here. Miss Blue Jay might be in the perfect position. If they do peek into her, she holds down the swing out, but she can't find that shot. Instead, it's California elsewhere to pick that up. And then run it back to open sight. She's still pushing this and actually finds another frag as well. Ginny Jelly has made this 8-4 scoreline very, very possible here. Yeah, look at this. Attacker in tree room. Not gonna read that. Oh. And that's gonna push them off the site. Oh, that might even kill her. No. She'll oh. live through it. But a 3v4 here. Drop down from the Phoenix Ultimate. One up top. A pick from Carissa. Trade through by Violet. Now it's Brit. She has to find something on the site here. 2v2. The shock darts starting to come out. It will land. Kills one. And the second as well, California Shock Darts will find that fourth in the clutch.
Very Such well played. Side. You know, I was kind of expecting some shock darts from Icarissa, but California with <laughs> not shock darts. <laughs> uh, I was expecting some mollies from Icarissa, but California mm -hmm. pulled through in that last moment. She was able to get to those two frags at the end. Just very well played on her part, being patient with it. And so now uh, we are looking at uh, round 13 where it seems like... I don't know what it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> very, very insightful there. Thank you, Cece. But it does seem like a lean towards towards the A side. Killjoy, however, is set up here, and Ginny Jelly, she's going to be the first point of contact. If she falls here, this is going to be a tough hold for the Killjoy, especially if she's completely alone. Jiggle up, looking for something, spots out a couple, and she'll fall away unscathed. So good start, and now there's utility available to try and stave off this A hit. And this rotate will be coming out so they can try and at least retake site, but the attackers will not leave any room or time. Icarissa, though, with this hell hold, getting that frag. Yeah, and Lindsay's coming through on this flank, holding down. She's looking for the peek out, but she actually can't find that. Good adjustment there from Brit to pick up the kill. Great response from Ginny, but still, the trade's coming through into a three on three. Violet in main catches Icarissa up on that jump. And the spike now recoverable as it's left to two in the clutch. Oh, swing out, but she actually escapes from that. That is unfortunate for Karai, and her armor will get chipped away by that turret. So now the call can come through. Okay, guys, B site is completely clear, and it's going to be a tough one to retake here. Yeah, especially in a 2v3 situation, I don't see this leaning towards the Valkyries site at this point. Uh, they will be able to just gain full advantage of the site, and so... Now it's just up to this, left. but look at this. We are seeing Violet Ali in mid. Just not going to meet anyone at the moment. Yeah, I like this positioning because it might just capitalize for that frag. It will. Violet Ali on to Karai. And now California is called upon in this clutch here. Two shock darts available, a recon in 30, but it's a nice tap away from Brit. And this pistol round, I mean, if they convert this, this is double digits so early, CC. Yeah. And already, I mean, it, it you know, I, <laughs> I, I think at this point, it's pretty much leaning towards the Mocha's taking this map. Right now, we will be looking towards a uh, B push and... Uh, I'm kind of interested in seeing if they can take a little bit more of mid control because right now it seems like they're just trying to all attack from one corner. Yeah, and it will be, of course, that bigger buy up for the defense. Majority starting to push into middle and Brit will find that opening frag. She has the heal up. The Aldron's coming through. California trying to do some skeet shooting point blank with her dart <laughs> or something along those lines. And the attackers, the remainder will start to funnel towards this site, and this is actually a pretty big misread from the defense. Look, two already heading towards that A side. Yeah, that early pick is definitely going to help them try and take site, and so they're going to be held off a little bit by this smoke. And <laughs> Omen's rotating into mid. If they had pushed in this moment, it would have. If she goes market, critical. she's dead to the boost. Yeah. This is tough, and I, I also I love the call to rotate off. Good bait there. I, I think that the mid-round calling throughout this game thus far from the Mochas has been really strong. Winter on that omen. Calling some good stuff thus far. But this might be a mistake. Over towards A, there's two sitting. However, they're second-guessing themselves. One's starting to fall away, and Raze needs to make an information play. But they're there to pick up the frag. So with 30 seconds left, it's the site falling in control of the attackers. And the remainder of these defensive players are going to have to work back in with a really heavy gun deficit. Yeah, so they're going to try to take these close fights by taking control of Tree, but looks like Icarus might meet Brit, or maybe not. She's going to whiff all of that. <laughs> yeah, but Icarus will still find that frag, so that's a gun down. The player in Hell, however, is still finding shots. Icarus is really low, and now she's blinded by that paranoia. I mean, at this point, what, what, can, what can they even do here? With this low of a buy, with this low of opportunities, the peek out and the reply by Brit. Lindsay finds one, but again, it's Brit to trade through. And now in round three, she has to run it back. 
Yeah. And I think in that moment, you just want to do as much damage as you can to their economy. So that way they can't really afford good guns later on. You know, if, if they have to force into this round, they're going to if they lose that, then they might be hurt later. And you just basically anti eco. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the expected result. But still, I mean, a 10 to 4 scoreline. This is this is not the great situation, but ooh, that's an Odin up for California. And they're walking right into her position. Recon dart to reveal. Can she find anything on the sp Oh, she didn't no. even spray. And it's not going to gain her anything. She's blinded out. They're pushing into her. The spray down from the Odin won't find anything, but Lindsay will. And she'll start to fall away. Door closed. So California's trapped. But she's still good for one. A gun recovered. Miss Blue Jay holds in close by the door as the remaining defenders start to rotate in. Peek out. And the boom buddy won't reveal the player in close. It's drifting on in, and Lindsay finds the frag, and it actually doubles oh, back no. for Miss Blue Jay <laughs> as well. So now it's just the Odin player. Thought walking, holding in the sight. And if this is one gun to stave off an assault, it would be the Odin. However, really good paranoia there to close it up. And they find that pretty cleanly, too. Yeah. And I think, uh, despite, you know, California only being good for at least one on that Odin, she did a lot of chip damage in regards to when the team started pushing. And so that kind of helped secure her team some frags. And they didn't take as much damage as they would have because of that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, I mean, that's a really pivotal one for them to win. And also a pivotal one for them to keep kind of the economy pretty clean and keep building in. But I don't think anyone on the side of Mocha is going to be complaining about their situation just yet. No. I, I think they're feeling pretty secure right now. And they're not, they're not too worried at this moment. And so they they can take their time with things. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, they actually have, have a three stack towards A this time. Yeah, we have not seen this yet, so I'm interested. Gonna look more towards a bit of cat. That's why you set up here. And the Phoenix holds down, but a great shot from Brit to open this up. She has the run it back available as well. The door starts to come down the alarm bot. And the Swarm Grenade deals some good damage. Cry now. She's the, kind of the sole player on site here. Very isolated from the rest of her teammates, barring the player in hell, but or I'm sorry, in heaven, in heaven rather. But look at this rotation. They know they don't have to commit. They can just chill out. They can sweat out the defense. They have man advantage. Yeah, and that's a free B site for them if they can take this. And they can even cut off some players at mid if they uh, choose to kind of push out a little bit. But it seems like they're just going to go very slow. That's going to allow time for the rotate, actually. And so they're going to have to meet somebody here. Yeah, Miss Blue Jay. The first contact, she dashes across right into California's Odin. And now this slowness might spell disaster because the attackers, they've been split up. And they're getting cut down, and now only 30 seconds left. They have to push into a stacked bomb site. Violet Ali, good for one, but California is still here with the Odin. And she is still hitting shots. She has a recon dart available. So they have to cross past an Odin, pass this smoke. And she can spray away, but it is winter. She does escape, gets across, and the resurrection is available, but where could she even use it? The wall up in CT, however, Karai up over still finds the shot. Winter has to be the one to do this alone. She finds the first, 39 HP for 1v2, spots out the turret, and that's good information transferred, but she's reloading, and she'll peek into Karai. Six rounds, and this is only a four-round gap between the teams now. Yeah, you did not want the wall in that situation against the Noden. I mean, at that point, it's going to be gone in three seconds. And then mm -hmm. you're going to get caught mid-resurrection, you and your teammate. And so now that will be a 10-6 round, which is looking slightly better. Um, I'm kind of hopeful for these odds because looking at these ults that we have available, Silva's ult can be really good for kind of stopping the plant and flushing out the site a little bit, kind of clearing some corners even with that. So I'm, I'm hopeful for another good round. Yeah, they do have the lockdown on that attacker side. However, like you just mentioned, the Hunter's Fury there. So that like very direct counterplay is available. And I doubt they'll want to use that on their save round here. Look at this. We're seeing a lot more aggression towards multiple angles. And I'm kind of hopeful for more of taking mid control. But it looks like they're going to like to go A with this kind of little sneaky push with the spike actually 
Yeah, it looks like this might be kind of a bait-and-switch setup. They're planning to get these alt orbs early on, and maybe trying to sell a fake towards B, but no one's biting quite yet, and they will start to head back towards middle to regroup. very silent no contact being made and so it seems like they are just trying to get a feel for every site but it's not coming out you know they're not pushing out being patient lots of time to work with here 47 seconds on the clock and the slowness can help to pull out some aggression make these defenders antsy make them make a play but they might not have to that molly is perfect but she finds a safe haven, heals up ever so slightly, back to 52. But they still know she's trapped in this corner. Support is in from Brit. And if we look at the attack, it does look to be an A finish. The blender opens up with the swarm grenades finding two. And Karai as well is, is just holding on tight at this point with 10 seconds left. They're forced to push into this, forced to run into the fire of Karai. She'll mop up three. So seven rounds now. Very good performance from Karai, just being patient and holding that angle. And you know they're going to be pressured to kind of push into to try and get that spike plant down. And so she just had to kind of wait for them to go into her sight lines, mm -hmm. just pick them off one by one, by the way. They just kept giving her 1v1s, and so it was just very easy for her in the end. Yeah, and I think part of the reason that those 1v1s were isolated was the swarm grenades. Two players got stuck behind, one was forced ahead, and the two others who st stuck around and had a little look-see, well, they were just burned by the mollies and taken care of very handily. California, I mean, she hasn't found any frags through the wall with this Odin yet, but I feel like there's like a deterrence to it as well. Like, it stopped any really heavy B rushes thus far. And now is the time for that lockdown to come into play. Violet Lee initiates it, and... Uh, the Sova's here, he could use his ult if he wanted to, but it doesn't look like that's the choice. Run it back into sight. They know this is a round that they need, so they'll start this push in quickly. Brit has that spike. She actually might get slingshotted back before she can do this, so she's gonna have to try and work her way back in, but with the door down, it should not be an issue whatsoever. Good post plant positioning, but the retake starting to come quickly. Lindsay for one, and that is the position given away, but they line up for her! That is so unfortunate! for the side of Valkyrie. And now, it's into this four versus two. Two ults available, but do you even use them at this point? Well, you could flush people out off of sight and kind of pressure them to go into that one corner. Sova ults that, and immediately you get free picks at that point. Yeah, but, but the flank. Uh, the, the flank, flank is through for Miss Blue Jay. She finds one, and the second, four in the round for the woman. And on the jet, she has just picked up the individual performance, currently sitting at... Well, what? She's actually bottom of the barrel for her team. 9 and 12, but I didn't even realize, because when she is needed, she has impact. Yeah, she. the frags she gets are important. That's the thing, is every time she's done something, it's always been a pivotal moment where it mm -hmm. changes the round in her favor. Right now, we are looking at, though, five ults on Team Valkyrie's side. Hopefully we can see something done with this because it's just, they can do a lot in regards to retaking site or kind of flushing out attackers. It's just very powerful ult economy and they can take advantage of this. Yeah, and to remind you, this is Valkyrie's map choice that is currently Mocha sitting 11-7 up. So a good showing to start things off. Paint grenade out for some early damage. That's five alts on the table for the defensive side. Yeah. This is a round that should heavily lean in their favor. And it's a round they need. They're facing match point if they lose this. Spam through on all the normal positions. And the Owl Drone trying to reveal something. There is a Hunter's Fury if she deems it necessary, but she'll decide against it. Hold on for the moment. Keep that alt in possession. Five on five here. And the rotations are coming through, but the defensive positions they're kind of sending themselves back to their default so well they did make that noise they pulled the little utility it what is it going to do for them well Lindsay has been anchoring the site no matter what and so they are going to meet Lindsay here up in market oh they're leaving oh no just the most inopportune time yeah and this is a fake they're kind of falling for this the defenders they're being split across the board Watch them. 
And Lindsay, where is she taking this? She's going into the back site. She's actually sticking into this, pulls out the gun, and oh, still wins no. that fight magically. <laughs> Lindsay almost finds two, but Winter holds down the fort. Not for long, though. The Hunter's Fury to trade back, and they still have alts to go. The Bladestorm for one, but California trades back. Violet Ali, she's very late to the show, so Miss Blue Jay has to make herself a hero here. Good for the first. Back onto the Vandal, peeking out. A second frag as well. Miss Blue Jay, so good in these situations. She has a dash. Getting away from things. She still finds another, but it will be the mop-up from Karai. And a close one, but they survive to eight. Yeah, and again, with those pivotal moments where Miss Blue Jay performs, she got those frags in the middle of all of that aggression. She was able to take so many fights, but in the end, it was just too much pressure at once. And she, so that is going to be another round for the Valkyries. And so now we're at an 11 8 round, you know. I, I was kind of thinking that it would be a heavy favor for the Mochas, but they're kind of pulling this back now, Mimi. Yeah, they're pulling it back to an extent, but look how much they invested there. To have it come down to a 1v1 using four alts, that doesn't bode super well for them. But we do still have some available, and I, I, I'm i just focusing on this KJ ult because it could be pivotal to changing a round a round. Oh, yeah, and that's going I, I think no. what part of the thing that's going to make that so powerful is the fact that Mo Mocha's not running a silver, they're not running a brimstone, and Karai's trying to run away from the site, but... Uh, I. I'm not sure what prompted her to do that, because now this is just an unfortunate situation. And sometimes just kind of the nerves get to you, and you do something that gets punished. Ginny on the flank for one, but the refrag from Miss Blue Jay is always there, always available. Killjoy Lockdown and Resurrection both still in the picture, as you mentioned off the rip, as Lindsay finds that one. Now this blender turned on, but Miss Blue Jay dashes straight on through to pick up that frag. Brit for one of her own. And to keep it off match point, Lindsay has to clutch it out here. Her position is compromised. However, a paranoia is still available. One dark cover as well. So lots to work with, but lots to do as well. Yeah, but look at this. The attackers are split up right now. Oh, but she's not going to swing off of that. And so again, they will group up and it will be a 1v2 situation, possibly meeting them both at once. And this may be a round for Mocha. And I'm not sure if those hot hands are available. I'll make it very tough for her and she has the misread she thinks there's one hell it's taking this really slowly this time draining away that hourglass coming down to the last couple of grains she taps on the spike trying to hold this for half the spam's coming through and the flash out as well she hops off it at this point there's so little time left she finds the first frag tap on the bomb and even if she finds the frag there's wait no she halved it she's gonna get this by no, the she got it what oh my god brit is gonna be beating herself up over that one because that is a round they she never should have won that Brit just needed to pester her for a little bit longer and she she stuck that and you know that was because she stuck that to half and was just very yeah. patient with that Props oh to my her. goodness that takes some gall to sit on the bomb and get it to half like she did there so well played to find a miraculous round and now this is so so close 11 to 9 here Wow, this has definitely turned around. And so now we are looking more towards some A side aggression, kind of leaving Bomb at the back to get a feel for each site. But they will meet Ginny Jelly, kind of pestering them with these flashes. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about both those flashes being out of the picture so early on because that's not going to gain them much space. That's not going to gain them much of anything. It is back down to this default. I mean, if you're. If you're Mocha, you've got to reset for a second. That's got to be a tilter. Because this is the point where you can start to feel that momentum slipping away from you. You felt like that had to be your round, and it just wasn't. Yeah. Definitely some heavy hearts right now. Silence. And that's even worse for them, but no. Miss Blue Jay, the hero when she needs to be, finds two picks. And they have man advantage they also have a resurrection made even better from that frag by thought walking yeah, and now a 2v4 like, here free sight plant will go down at this point and so now they just kind of have to hold and a 4v2 situation is going to be hard to retake this might be match point and that's what we said last time but they pulled through that's actually a unintentional actually boost up the dash out she'll stay true but karai finds that one. However, the odds still heavily favoring that of the attackers, and Brit 
confirm more so. Again, it's down to Lindsay on the omen. She spots out one. It's so many targets available to her. She knows one is hell, and she has this isolated, but the paranoia has faded, and her chance has two match point. Yeah, and even if the paranoia hadn't faded, you know, that's such a close angle. They're gonna see you. So at that point, the advantage is gone. And mm -hmm. now that will be match point. And <laughs> this is a match point that they can't afford weapons. And so this just does not look good, Mimi. Yeah, I mean, the one saving Greg, I guess, would be that Killjoy lockdown. There has to be something. Something has to happen for them. Someone has to go big here. And for Mocha, they just have to keep doing what they've been doing. Because if they keep trading rounds like this, they're not going to complain. Because they're always going to stay on top from how good their defensive half was. Mm -hmm. So now, the, oh, looks like Valkyrie's trying to play it safe. Trying to not get picked off because they don't want to lose any advantage they can get at this point. And so it's just me very patient. Slow I'm here. At these, yeah, I'm looking at these ults up from Team Mocha. Oh no. It's yeah. just... Jenny wanted to be that hero there. She wanted to make the play, but she can't. And now on site is Winter, and she finds a frag on to Jenny. That run it back, not gonna net her anything. And the hot hands to keep them out for the moment. 4v5 here. Resurrection still on the table. Miss Blue Jay, she gets flushed out and two frags come through. This is still very doable. They could stay in this. A shock dart up. The Killjoy locked down too. The odds start to swing in their favor here. Yeah, and this is not looking good right now though. Ooh, swarm grenade. Good damage. And look at the time. The time is their biggest enemy here. Because the positioning is still strong in the back site. Carissa swings out, but she's a trade through into the two-on-one. It has to be just one player left. The Molly's on the bomb, and they have the frags, but do they have the time? No, they don't, and that... So... Oh. No, no way. No, it's not going to happen again. That's going to be it Attackers for Team win. Valkyrie against Mocha on our ascent map. And so 13-9, that was, that was Valkyrie's pick. Yeah, that was Valkyrie's pick, and I, I applaud them for getting it that close. That was that was one that if they weren't if they didn't have the gumption, that was one that could have very easily slipped away in a much more divisive fashion. But they didn't. They held on tight. They did well for themselves, and well, despite that, it's going to be thirteen nine in favor of Mocha. And next up to bat. It will be Icebox. After this short break, we will be back with the Gallerance League, powered by Elgato.